that's the highest degree in Freemasonry and written by the undisputed heavyweight champion of modern Freemasonry, Albert Pike. On page 321, he boldly states, Lucifer, the light bearer, strange and mysterious name to give to the spirit of darkness. Lucifer, son of the morning, is it he who bears the light? Doubt it not. Did you hear that? Lucifer is God, and do not doubt it. Come on now, stay with me. All right, I'm going to try to do this quickly. So this video shows this clip. We just looked at the video. Notice that it cuts off a sentence. The first sentence is a half sentence and despises all the pomps and works of Lucifer. Um, the creator of the video goes on to say that uh, this book says that Lucifer is God, very clearly. Well, this book is available for free for viewing. It's called Morals and Dogma. Here we have page 321, the, the part that's quoted. Quickly, I'm going to try to go through this chapter and not get bound up, even though, you know, it might take a little bit, but check this out. Okay. It's talking about the apocalypse. The part before this says many things about Jesus, about God, and we'll get into that, which is, you're going to be very excited about that. It says, the apocalypse is to those, uh, the, I'm sorry if I butchered this word. This was a new word to me. A hypothesis, which I had to look up the definition of that. So I have it here. The perfect form or example of something. Uh, highest or best part of something. Peak. So the apocalypse is the peak of sublime faith, which aspires to God alone and despises all the pomps and works of Lucifer. So check us out. Here we have two different entities, God and Lucifer. The apocalypse is a sublime faith which aspires to God and despises the works of Lucifer. Clearly, just, just in this paragraph alone, notice that he cut off in the video this part which says God alone despises all the pomps and works of Lucifer. He cut off that part which, I mean, even within this part, you could have read uh, into this. Uh, it says, Lucifer, the, in italics, light bearer? Strange and mysterious name to give to the spirit of darkness. Here it calls Lucifer the spirit of darkness, which God despises the pomps and works. Lucifer, the son of the morning? It asks the question, is it he who bears the light? And with its splendors intolerable, blinds feeble, sensual, or selfish souls. So we're saying uh, Lucifer uh, binds feeble, sensual, and selfish souls. This very clearly says that God is different than Lucifer and God despises the work of Lucifer. It talks about Jesus in this chapter specifically. Um, you, you can get this. I'll post a link to this. It's it's free. You can read this. I, I did read the chapter and came about some respect or understanding. So I'm going to go through this as quick as I can. The true Mason labors for the true Mason labors for the benefit of those who come after him and the advancement and the improvement of his race. He says that those who plant a tree which they will not be able to enjoy does the best work of life. He says those that will toil and stint themselves to educate their child that he may take a higher station in the world than they. Greatest examples of uh, life, a mother giving her life blood to those who will only pay, who pay only for the work of her needle. She's sacrificing herself for her child. He says, "This is the this is the good thing to do." He goes on to talk about Moses, son of a Jewish woman. Adopted by a daughter of Ramses, slew an Egyptian and oppre that oppressed a Hebrew slave, 
came the deliverer of the Jews and led them forth from Egypt to the frontiers of Palestine and made a law which grew the Christian faith and associated the destinies of the world. These are our legislators, and we obey the laws that they enacted. He says that it's the dead that enact uh, the law, or that set the laws, and the future living are the ones that who uh, abide by it. He says that the greatest thing is that you would be dead. If the dead can see what is going on, the dead would like to see that their teachings... Uh, opened up let's see if the soul sees after death what passes on this earth and watches over the welfare of those it loves then it must be hap- then it must be its greatest happiness consists in seeing the current of its beneficent influences widening out from age to age widening into rivers aiding to the shape of destinies of individuals families states and the world and its bitter punishment and seeing the evil influences caused, causing mischief and misery and cursing and afflicting men. So the greatest thing, if the dead can see after their dead, is to see that the work that they've done benefits future generations. <clears throat> it mentions Jesus and... Uh, God and many things in this. It says to do good work and often those that do the good work let others reap the harvest of their labors. He says that the Redeemer was unfortunate. Notice the capital Redeemer. Those who are paid him for the gift he offered them and for the life past and toiling for their good by nailing him, notice these capital hymns, upon the cross as though he had been a slave or malefactor. If not for slander and persecution, the Mason must look for apathy and cold indifference to those good he seeks in order to seek the good of others. He goes on and he says that Jesus was betrayed by one of his 12 disciples. Here it is. The Redeemer at his death had 12 disciples. One betrayed and one deserted and denied him. It is enough to know that the fruit comes in its good season. When and who will gather it, it does not least concern us to know. It is our business to plant the seed. It is God's right to give the fruit to whom he pleases. And if not to us, then is by our action by so much more noble. So he says that you'll try to do good, but people will despise you and take what you did wrong anyway. <clears throat> um, so yeah, wow. He talks about the the creator. God has chosen to create. He talks about creator. God is the creator of everything. So it says here, the Indian Ocean. A deep sea would nowhere have found the bottom. Below these waves were myriads of minute existences. Each perfect living creature made by the almighty creator and fashioned by him to do the work it had to do. They toiled beneath the water, ignorant of the result which God intended. He talks about riverbeds being created by different things. He talks about raindrops sinking in. He's talking about all creation. There's these things that are moving by God's doing. They don't they're for the benefit of others. They don't know what they're doing, but simply following the will of God. Therefore, faint not, nor be weary in well-doing. Be not discouraged at men's apathy, nor disgusted by their follies, nor tired of their indifference. 
care not for the returns and results, but see only that there is good to do, see only that there is to do and do it, leaving the results to God. Look at this, soldier of the cross. This is a reverence for Jesus, soldier of the cross. People who have a reverence for the cross of Jesus. Sworn knight of justice, truth, and toleration. Good knight and true. Be patient and work. And this is where he goes on to talk about the apocalypse. He mentions good things take time. And he talks about the apocalypse being the height of the sublime faith which aspires to God alone and despises all pomps and works of Lucifer, the spirit of darkness. I mean, it, if you read this chapter at all, you cannot get that Lucifer is God. That is not what the writer said at all. To say that is a lie. The apocalypse sums up and passes all science of Abraham and Solomon. This was a funny part. It says the visions and now the new s symbolic temple, which was the temple they created, are, are equally mysterious expressions. Their symbol are as, as little understood by the commentators as those of Freemasonry. It says as far as the apocalypse and the details in the temple, the new temple that they had built, the details are unknown, even to Freemasons. There's a part that goes on here and talks specifically about Jesus. Here it talks about uh, different colors and such. Here we go. And it gets into Hebrew here. will of God includes his wisdom and his wisdom is his will specifically developed and acting this wisdom is the logo that creates um, the principle of the beginning the beginning was that is to say is was and will be the word that is to say reason that speaks the word is the reason of belief and it is also the expression of faith which makes science a living thing. The word is the source of logic. Jesus is the word incarnate. Wow, Jesus is the word incarnate. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. It talks about how <clears throat> the word... always is this is tying Jesus to God it's, it's very clear it is uh, it is by his uttered word that God reveals himself to us. God reveals himself through his word, Jesus. This is another sentence which you can have uh, disagreements of as far as the author's belief here. But it definitely says that God is not Lucifer. Conviction of all men... Is, okay, here we go. Not alone in visible and in, invisible, but intellectual creation. But also in our convictions, consciousness, and instincts. It says that God reveals himself through our convictions, consciousness, and instincts. It says the conviction of all men that God is good led to a belief in the devil, the fallen Lucifer, or light bearer. To explain the existence of evil. Barely clearly says. God is not Lucifer. 
whoever made the the dude making the video and saying that this text says that God is Lucifer is lying. Whether he knows it or not, he's lying. It says Masons are a group of people that um, work to benefit the future generations. Um, they don't expect people to understand. They expect people to mock them, to treat them badly. It says here that Jesus is the word that God despises the works of Lucifer. God reveals himself through his word, Jesus. And then the chapter just ends on what is superior is as that which is inferior. It's talking about creation. The created and the created. Created and the creator. The inferior us is as that which is the superior. That is to say that we are made in God's image. Below is as that which is above. Earth is made in some likeness after heaven. The form to form the marvels of unity. You can read this chapter yourself. I'll post that. I wouldn't believe anything this guy says. He doesn't He doesn't have enough understanding um, to understand what this chapter says because uh, it clearly it doesn't say anything about Lucifer being God. Either he doesn't understand or he does understand and he can't be convinced otherwise. There's lots of people out there like weird stuff like queuing on people who even though you say what this person is saying is not true and you can tell the person who's not who's saying it that it's untrue that they just keep on going on and on about it this is the final part that i wanted to cover it's just um as those that are focused on spiritual aspects uh, another pair a sentence from this bit is that uh in philosophy, identity of reason and reality in religion, providence, the divine action that makes real the good, that which Christianity we call the Holy Spirit. It's interesting. He says, in Christianity, we call the Holy Spirit, saying that he is a part of Christianity. He's saying that the Holy Spirit is the divine action that makes real the good. That was pretty cool. So we have uh, Holy Spirit, we have God, and we have Jesus, all being mentioned in this chapter. That's uh, that's pretty good. I just wanted to make one point uh, in that I noticed earlier when I referred to uh, Jesus facing the cross, um, I mentioned uh, unfortunate. I was just reading quickly. The text says that Jesus is not unfortunate, even though he... Uh, face the cross and everything and people betrayed him because he did what was good for those to come so that was just an error on my part small error um but yep that should uh, pretty much wrap it up that's this chapter uh talking about um god is not lucifer it's very clear in this Wh whoever would say that uh that this book is a freemason source and that this chapter uh, which is a Freemason source, which is correct, uh, says that God is Lucifer. That is a, that is a lie, 100%. Check it out yourself. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. The last little bit I'll add to this is that I find it very funny and very ironic. This chapter talks about Masons planting trees for future generations, regardless of people attacking them or seeing what they are doing is wrong, regardless if they'll see the fruits and benefits of it. Here we have people making these videos uh, saying that... Uh, uh, Mason teaches that uh, these books teach that Masons say that Lucifer is God, um, that these people are evil, uh, such as George Washington. Uh, George Washington spent his life uh, creating the, the, the fundamental, the foundations of America, which is planting a tree which future generations enjoy the shade. There has not been more um, religious freedom anywhere but in America, I would argue. I'll argue that America is one of the centers of justice and truth, certainly of uh, freedom to express and free thought. And it's amazing. Um, I don't agree with the... I, I don't know all the tenets of Freemasonry. Um, I don't agree with all the spiritual stances of George Washington. 
Um, he did have a connection to Christianity, and uh, he also sometimes varied in seeing uh, other divine entities, um, which I don't know if I agree with. He talks about providence a lot of times. I'm not getting into that in this video. Uh, what I'm saying is that I believe that George Washington was focused on doing the will of God, uh, regardless if his theology was perfect. Um, and it's evidenced that he has planted trees that have benefited future generations and did amazing works for uh, Christianity. And <laughs> people here making these videos, uh, spreading uh, lies and trying to defame people um, that have done great works while they sit in the shade of what these men have accomplished for the good of people around them. And they say these people worshipped Lucifer, worshipped Satan, and it's the total destruction of everything. It's, it's somewhat ridiculous that you're sitting under the shade that they planted and casting lies about them. And even in this text, which is my first time reading the text, it says, do the, do the work that is before you, even if people mock you, will not understand you. It's amazing. Anyway, I just want to share that perspective. Goodbye.